Hello, uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on the place of the world we, you are now. Uh, my name is Eduardo Freitas. I am the editor at Mundo Geo and Drone Show, and I will be the moderator of this webinar. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, welcome everyone uh, who is already online with us. Also to Hemingbird Technologies, this partnership to host this event, and in particular to Mr. Aaron Mikkel Beidun, is that okay? Uh, Chief Strategy Officer of uh, Hemingbird. Uh, he's going to share with you real examples of how precision agriculture tools uh, using drones and satellite images were used on a large agribusiness for the first time, what happened, the costs, the results, and the opportunities. Uh, before passing the floor to the speaker, I would like to give you some reminders. Uh, first of all, the webinar replay will be available today in our YouTube channel. The link will be mailed to you uh, so you can uh, review and you can uh, share with your friends. The certificate of participation uh, will be sent also by email within uh, one or two days. And you can send your comments and your questions uh, in the chat box uh, uh, by the side of the webinar. Uh, from now on, make the most of this time together uh, during the webinar. And Mr. Aaron, welcome. And you can start whatever, whenever you want. Muito obrigado. Uh, bom dia a todos. My name is Aaron Beidun, and I'm Chief Strategy Officer here at Hummingbird Technologies. Uh, we're based in London. Uh, I know we shared some initial information with you guys, and I just want to say foremost, thank you to everybody for joining us today and wherever you are in Brazil. Uh, foremost, what I'd like to get across in the beginning is I know there are a lot of agri-technologies that exist in the market today, uh, whether on the genetic side, the microbial side, on the robotic side, on the precision ag side, uh, there's a lot of things happening, and unfortunately, when there's so much happening, it makes it even more difficult to understand what's real, what's not real, uh, what's relevant, and what's not relevant to me. What we wanted to do today and the purpose of this conversation was to give all of you a realistic uh, uh, journey, if you will, our journey with a very large-scale uh, producer um, called Salik. Uh, they're affiliated to the Saudi Arabian Sovereign Wealth Fund, amongst the largest in the world. And effectively, what their mandate is, is they're a food security hedge, if you will, for the government, the sovereign government of Saudi Arabia. And as a country that's uh, food dependent or net importer of food, one of the strategies of their government is effectively to not only work with the international grains markets, but to outright own outright land uh, and farmland that they both invest in and operate themselves. We were selected as a partner to work with them as they expand internationally and as they buy farmland internationally to be the first to effectively deploy some of our precision agricultural technologies, and I'll, I'll get into specifically what we were doing with them, on their operations to help them and to demonstrate real value for a real farmer. Uh, and so the idea today is to show you guys our journey how it began, some of the pain that we went through, some of the some of the failures, and some of the successes as well, so that other large-scale producers in Brazil can also understand how some of these technologies can be used. So I'm going to share my screen now. I hope uh, hope you guys can see this. Second here, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Just loading here. Eduardo, can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see your screen. Excellent, excellent. So I'm going to, I gave you a little bit of background about who we are, uh, and most recently we just closed a new round of funding we're not only an ag tech company of data scientists or engineers, but most importantly, what I want to emphasize is we're science and agronomy led. Our chairman and founder is a farmer. Our biggest investor is a farming group. Uh, and in the most recent round of investment, uh, the very large German company, Bassif, also joined uh, our funding. 
So we're backed by strategic investors. When we here, when we engage Salic, they have an operation all around, they have different farming operations all around the world. And we began working with them specifically in a company based in the Ukraine. The Ukraine is a bit different than Brazil in terms of what the agronomic or soil or weather conditions are like. But nevertheless, as a very large grower, a lot of the problems that they are dealing with are representative of other large farmers, whether they're in the Ukraine, Brazil, or elsewhere. And so what we would like to show here is when we first engaged with them, and this was a very early on this year, how the relationship began, we told this customer, we want to understand what is the pain? What are the problems that you're dealing with? A lot of times when people are offering a lot of these new precision agricultural tools, they develop a tool and then they're looking for a market. We approached it in the inverse, where we identified what are the problems you're trying to solve and how can we best solve those problems? And so as you can see on the screen, you know, these are some of the key challenges that they were dealing with. Everything from theft and basically managing inventories to basically live tracking their operations from a management perspective so they could save time. It's really, really difficult as a large producer. In this case, they had 200,000 hectares that we were looking at. Or in Brazil, where you see farms that are almost a million hectares, it's really difficult to manage such large areas. And so one of the most important things that we wanted to do for our customer was to help them save time as well. And so here, I'm just giving you a quick breakdown of their operations across the Ukraine. They're, look, they're at about 200,000 hectares of fields, producing about 87, almost 90,000 tons of grains that they commercialize and, uh, and introduce to the grain markets themselves, similar to what large producers in Brazil are doing. And so when we initially met with them, they, then they said, okay, there is a lot of competing software in the market today. Why are you different? How are we going to work with you? What's the solution that you're going to bring us? They weren't just looking for products. They were looking for a solution. And we told them, we want to help you save time. We want to help you save money. And we want to help you increase your yield to actually earn more money as well. And these were some of the key things that I have mentioned here on the screen to help them better understand their own performance, as well as different, the performance of different farm managers that were located on different blocks within their operation. Our initial proposed methodology when we first approached them early on in January, and again, they were never using any other agri-technology. They were very typical of very large farms in the world today. They had some data. It was very coarse. It was in random Excel, she Excel sheets. They had tractors and different types of, uh, of hardware, but no real uh, agri-tech solution that's being implemented today. And so we recommended that they buy uh, certain types of, uh, of drones that they would use to collect the data and we would help them. So here on this slide, and I just want to give you an idea of operations year to date, before I get into the specific results of the products that we deployed, they were a company that owned about 70 tractors across their operation. Very typical of very large, almost old farming operations. These were different brands, different models, different year uh, production dates, so they were old. And in our experience with Salik and this large grower in the Ukraine, only about 72% of the tractors that were collecting the data on the ground, in addition to the drones, um, were actually successful in deploying some of our variable rate technologies. 15% were still trying to unlock, so it's still to be determined. And about 15% of the existing tractors that they had on these fields uh, were frankly too old and incompatible with the technology that we were deploying. And this slide here, these were and these are the different products that we've deployed and that we've sold to this customer that they were going to use on their fields. And I'm going to go in and give you guys a very honest result in terms of what happened when we deployed these products, what was the cost to the customer, what were the, the actual economic benefit slash result, um, and then you know, give you guys, was it worth it or was it not worth it for such a large grower? So here with one of the first products that we worked on them with, we were looking at corn. This was a 30, almost a 40 hectare example. It was a variable rate post-emergence herbicide. 
the cost of the herbicide was about $40 per hectare. Historically, what they would do with almost all chemical inputs is that they would blanket them across the fields. So there was no precision or variable rate element to it. And so historically, it would cost them about $1,500 per field, per block, this 40, 000, uh, 40 hectare block. We came in and we looked, we deployed some of our technology to help them more precisely deploy the herbicide. And we decided that in reality, they only needed to deploy herbicide on not 40 hectares, but about 29 hectares is what they needed to deploy it on. And so immediately their net cost came down from 1500 US dollars to about 1100 US dollars. And so we, they were saving just on this one block of a 200,000 hectare operation, they were saving over $400. And then the cost to them, because the next thing that somebody naturally is going to ask is fine, that's how much you saved, but how much did this product actually cost them? And this is information that a lot of ag tech companies are not really willing to share or they hypothesize a lot around. And in this case, it costs about $2 to collect the data so it costs about $78 for this field. So when you think about it, net cost to the customer for this specific product, they saved about eight, almost $9 per hectare with just this product by more precisely applying post-emergency herbicide. So that was a very successful deployment. Here I give you another example. And you know I apologize in advance because I know there's a lot of numbers here but it was a similar story we're looking at a sunflower field and the idea here again is to show you guys realistically what happened historically it was costing them about two, over two thousand dollars to apply the uh, the herbicide um on their sunflower fields with our precision technologies that two thousand dollars became one thousand four hundred and forty dollars so they were saving about six hundred dollars and then in addition to the data analysis cost and given all the costs that the customer incurred, they saved about $16 per hectare by using this technology. So it's a very, very big cost saving, especially when you look at very large, expansive fields of production. Here's another example that I'd like to share with you guys, and it's desiccation for winter wheat, again, in the Ukraine. We deployed this initially on a 140 hectare block this was not a successful product deployment. We didn't actually save them money. On the contrary, when you look at the after data cost, they were actually losing money. So this was a very open, honest conversation that we had with this customer. And when you consider the costs and everything all in, they were losing actually about $2 per hectare for this product, which has been marketed by our competitors at an even cheaper price. And again, for us was an example of a lot of information in the market that's almost confusing farmers to better understand what's real and what's not real. Here I wanna give you another example. It was a very modest savings of $1 per hectare when you consider all the costs for winter barley. But nevertheless, again, $1 is worth a considerable amount of money when you're looking at pretty big, expansive fields in the world. This was on a 60-hectare block. Uh, and again, you know, they have 200,000 hectares in total on this operation. So $1 was a very significant amount of money for this customer. And that's not including the savings that's, uh, that are associated with by deploy, you know, by using less labor, less fuel, less tractors out in the field, that also has incremental residual benefits to the customer. So it's not only one dollar saved, but it's also even more than that when you think about the savings related to fuel and labor, etc. Here's another example, um, and this, I think this is one of our final examples. Again. Um, to give you a real world example of technology that's available on the internet, but very abstract to understand what's real and what's not real. And here was a, a case where they were using potatoes and they wanted to desiccate and dry potatoes. And traditionally it cost them about $13 per liter. And traditionally what they did was they not only used one liter per hectare, but they used very high amounts. So they used about 4.2 liters per hectare 
And then in areas where they didn't think they needed less, they would uh, deploy about three liters per hectare. Traditionally, this customer was paying almost $4,000 for potato desiccation on this 72 hectare field size. We came in and deployed some of our variable rate technologies to show them where they needed to apply the desiccation more precisely. And they saved $450 per field. When you give in, when you consider the data analysis cost to the customer, they were saving over $4 per hectare just using this product. And again, not only including, this is not including the fuel savings, the maintenance and the labor savings that are included. So it's significantly more than $4 per hectare saved. One other product that I wanna mention before I kind of summarize all of this solution that we provided to this customer is we are currently deploying an in-season yield prediction um, on their fields. And we're looking at corn and soybeans, which are very relevant for farmers in the Brazil. And the idea here is to effectively help such a large operation mitigate their marketing and hedging risk by more optimally placing their hedges on the commercial markets, working with grain traders and commercial off takers, and to more optimally place their hedges and their bets to basically optimize their costs, costs and sale price to improve their profitability. So it's not only an issue of lowering costs, but it's also an issue of optimizing and improving profitability. And the idea here is we're working with them on two field blocks for corn and soybeans. Um, and we're awaiting the results, but so far we're very encouraged. We've already deployed some agronomists on the field that are validating some of our assumptions as well. So this is another very important product that we don't have a case study to share yet, um, but a very interesting product capability that we're developing. As you, I'm sure know, there is a lot of information recently around yield prediction, especially from a lot of US-based groups, the reality is this, these are not field level based predictions. These are more regional and national level predictions. So they're good as benchmarks, but as you as a large producer in Brazil, such as the case with our large customer in the Ukraine, they wanted to understand not only what is happening at a regional level, but more importantly, what's happening in their specific operation. So when you think about everything we're doing here and we put all of this together, the example I wanted to show you today is these were five different products that we deployed. Four of them saved our customer a significant amount of money. One of them was actually cost prohibitive and they lost money. But when you look at the full solution that we provided for this customer, and we learned a lot along the way, and it was really the first time that we engaged a large grower and who we plan on engaging in other parts of the world, the total savings per hectare across all of these products based on the solution that we provided was over $22 per hectare saved. And again, this doesn't even include the savings related to fuel and to labor and to maintenance costs. So this was a huge success for our customer. And they were so impressed and they were so relieved that they actually decided to invest in our last investment round and they led that investment round with Bassif and another large Canadian company. So this was a very, very successful deployment of precision agricultural tools uh, on a large scale farm. What I wanna share here is, you know, what are some of the key learnings that we learned here? And the reality is when we first began with this customer, they were extremely skeptical of the, of the tools that we could provide. And there are a lot of tools and a lot of technology available in the market today. So it's really difficult for farmers to understand what's real, what's not real, and most importantly, does it even matter? Is it even relevant to me? And so we had to overcome a tremendous amount of, of, of pessimism, if you will. And we had to motivate these employees to want to work with us so that they were motivated and aligned and understanding, look, we can save you time. We can save you money. We can make your job easier. This makes economic sense. Another you know, issue we underestimated was around farm equipment and the difficulties around farm equipment. And, you know, we've overcome a lot of those challenges, just, you know, working with this grower and learning more and maturing as an organization, even internally. And one other key learning, and I'm sure, you know, as large growers in Brazil, you can appreciate and understand this. People don't want to use several competing platforms or products. We understand that. And the way we are trying to position ourselves based on this experience, working with such a large grower amongst the largest in the world today, 
And based on this very successful deployment of this technology in the market today, we want to be that platform that not only helps you with our own precision tools, but also a platform that will enable you and be almost a universal platform for very large growers all over the world and especially in Brazil. We started off as a very small company when we began working with this large grower. In 2016, we only had four employees. Today, we have over 65 employees in growing. Our team is expanding all over the world. We have teams active on the ground here in the UK, in Brazil, in the Ukraine, in Australia, and in Brazil, of course. My colleagues are in Brazil already developing a very interesting pipeline of business where we're also looking for a very large partner, a large growing group that we can partner with. And we hope by the end of this year, we're going to be establishing our first initial North American presence with an office and an initial deployment, uh, a very large investment from a large Canadian farming group. And that's been a part of our strategy from the very beginning is we didn't want to be a company that was led only by data scientists, but a company that understood the business, that had farmers within the business, we understood large farming groups, and that we enter new markets via strategic farming partners. We did this in the Ukraine, we did this in Australia. We are about to do this in Canada, where we just recently announced a large partnership, and we hope to do this in Brazil. And this was really the purpose, the biggest purpose of this conversation was to benefit growers in Brazil so that they can see a real world example of a company based in London that helped a large grower such as yourself save over $24 saved per hectare. That's a tremendous amount of money. And we want to do this in Brazil. And I want to conclude this conversation really by just emphasizing again, we're a company that's backed not by financial investors, but by strategic investors. We are a global scale company. We've learned the challenges and the opportunities of working with large growers such as yourselves. And we want to work with large growers such as yourselves. I leave it here. I hope I didn't speak too much and I hope I didn't speak too fast. Uh, I leave here with my contact information. Um, we have a team, again, based in Brazil, in Sao Paulo. Um, and we can do this technology, you know, we can deploy these technologies not only for corn and soybeans, which we've already done and which are very relevant in a place like the Ukraine, uh, but in Brazil, uh, but are also developing and have very interesting technologies and capabilities related to sugarcane uh, and related to more specialty crops such as lettuces and potatoes, etc. cetera. Um, I keep it open. Eduardo, in case there's any questions, anybody's free to ask. Um, I can also share this presentation with anybody that would like it, uh, and I leave it there uh, for any questions. Otherwise, my contact information is there. Eduardo, perhaps we can share it with them um, and go from there. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Aaron. Obrigado. Um, and congratulations to Hemingbird and Salik. The numbers are impressive. Um, we have some questions here. First, uh, from Marcelo. Uh, he asked you if this model applies to Brazil. Yeah. The model definitely applies to Brazil. Um, because what we've done is we've set up the operational model, the ability to work with hardware, which is the same everywhere in the world, the same tractors, same everywhere in the world. Uh, we've also worked obviously with corn and soybeans, which are very relevant to Brazil. We've set up the model. And now what we're looking to do is to find a large partner in Brazil that's interested in using the technology and partnering with us to bring it there. We know that there are differences in soil conditions and weather conditions and agronomic conditions. Uh, we have a team of agronomists that sit in London uh, and a team on the ground in Brazil that, that is ready to execute and deploy this in Brazil. Okay, thank you. Uh, Guilherme ask you if, we, if we can, he can have this PPT uh, file. Uh, actually, I think we could send the PDF file to the, yeah. uh, of the presentation to our audience. So we yeah. will send the, the PDF uh, with the certificates of participation, okay? Yeah, and I have my contact information as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, before asking your final remarks, I would like to remind our audience that the webinar replay will be available today in our YouTube channel. Uh, 
uh, the link will be emailed to you uh, so you can review and you can uh, share with your friends and the certificates of participation will be sent also by email uh, with the pdf file with, with the slides uh, within one or two days okay uh, i invite you to always uh, visit the web page mundogeo.com slash webinar uh, where you can access the schedule of upcoming events and also the replay of the previous webinars and I hope to, hope to see you soon in our events, uh, whether online or uh, in person. Uh, our friend Jeff da Silva uh, sent you sent you a message uh, that was an excellent presentation. And uh, now, Mr. Aaron, I would like to ask your final remarks for our audience. I want to say muito obrigado a todos for attending. Much appreciated, and I just want to emphasize, you know, I come from the agricultural world as well. I'm not a technologist, uh, not an engineer, and I do understand that these are very big operations and that even one penny or one cent can make a big difference when you think about a large operation. Um, what I hope that this presentation accomplished was to show people a real company with real products and real honest results about what these products can and can't do as well. We have a very successful relationship now with this large grower who decided to invest in us. And we are now on the ground in Brazil and we're looking to work with a large grower in Brazil to deploy this technology. Uh, so please reach out. We're excited to be in Brazil and we're excited for the future. Okay, thank you all for your participation in this webinar. Uh, thank you, Hemingway Technologies for partnering uh, to host this event, in particular, Mr. Aaron. They do, and hope to see you soon. Bye bye. Thank you. Obrigado. Bye bye. Obrigado. Ciao.